when should we combine like terms, okay? So based upon the discussion we just got finished having, connecting our problem-solving day to what we're going to do in class, which is combining like terms. We said that when we grouped everything together, we grouped like terms together. Well, guess what, everybody? That's exactly when we should combine like terms. Y'all came up with that answer by just saying what we did. So we group like terms or items together. It's the same thing. Okay? Now, when we combine like terms, you can only combine the ones, like we said, x's with x's, x squared with x squared. We already talked about that both yesterday and today. But we also need to say one other thing. It's only done with addition and subtraction. So only addition and subtraction. Okay. Now, yesterday, after our problem-solving activity, and y'all used your problem-solving map for the first time, I gave you each, or we gave you, Ms. Trace and I gave you, a half sheet with six problems on it. And we just wanted to see, could you connect what was a like term on here and what was it? And we're going to go around and we're going to see, like, who needed a little extra help. We're going to help you with it just a minute. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you didn't know exactly what to do, that's what this lesson's for. So everybody look at 5x squared, and I want you to put a box around it. This is a way for you to combine like terms and do it with an ease. You can either use symbols, you can use colors, and we'll talk about that and all those choices in just a second. So 5x squared, can anyone tell me, raise your hand, if you know what term 5x squared can combine with that's listed? Raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. 3x squared, very nice. And when you put a box around 3x squared, please include the sign in front of it. Because when you do the sign in front of it with it, you know clearly what it is. Okay? So we need to combine 5x squared and 3x squared. So think of this like our hamburger and french fries example. If we have five hamburgers and now we have three more hamburgers, how many total hamburgers do we have? Eight. eight. And hamburgers is x squared, so we have eight x squared, right? Okay? So I really want to stress to you that what you're doing is you're taking the five, which is the number in front, plus the three. And if you didn't know what five plus three was, I know you all do, but if you didn't, you could use your calculator to do 5 plus 3. You cannot put the x squareds into the calculator. Is everybody clear with that part? Okay. I have a question. What is the 5 and the 3 called the number in front of the variable? Does anybody remember from last week? What did you say? Coefficient. Coefficient, yes. With a number in front of the variable is the coefficient. Oh, okay. okay. So we can add the coefficients or we can subtract the coefficients, right? Good job. I was really like, Sky, that was good, because I was like, I don't know if anybody remembers, but we're going to make that connection. Okay, now, look at the 2x. So you find your 2x. Everybody, it's a positive 2x. That's why there's a plus sign in front of it. And then we can look over here and we say, oh, here's another x term. So this is, is this 5x or is it negative 5x? Negative. Negative, negative 5x. Very good. So we can take 2 minus 5, and if we know what it is, we can put it down. If we don't know, we're going to put it in the calculator. Or something that really works well with money is using money on integers. So watch. If somebody owes you $5 and they give you $2, do they still owe you or do you have money? They, still owe, you. they owe you. What do they owe you? $3. So it's a negative, right? So negative 3 and x is whatever. You know, fries, whatever you want to make. Okay? X, we don't know. So this is our final answer. It's the simplification of this expression is this expression. This is the simplified expression. So let me ask one last question before Mr. Hayes comes up and does his example. And this, what? Why can't we combine anymore? Because what? Because they're different. Different what? 
variables, right? Because one is a x squared and one is a x. So we don't have like terms. So that's as simple as we can do it. I want to make one last connection for you. Last week we used a word called evaluate. Do y'all remember me seeing in that? Plug it in, plug it in. We talked about that, that every time you ask me what evaluate is, I'm going to sing to you all year. Okay, evaluate, remember that if I told you what x was, then we can plug in the number for x and we can get a number answer. But if we don't know what x is, then we can't combine any more or do anything. Everybody got it? Okay, great. One B. So just like you did over here, we're going to start with the first term. Okay, so we have 2z squared. So depending on what kind of uh, shape you want to make, and again, there's no right or wrong shape. It's just whatever works for you. So let's just say we're going to use a box. And we're going to box in 2z squared. Now what I would do is after I do that, I'm going to move along the problem. Move along the problem until I find another term that has z raised to the second power. Okay? So what about positive 8z? Will that work? No. no. What about positive 3u? No. Yes. Uh-oh. You sure? Okay. Uh, minus 6z squared. Yes. yes. Okay, so what am I going to do? Box it in, right? Also be careful that I include the sign to the left of the number because I have to know if what I'm dealing with is a positive or negative term. Okay? And then I'm going to finish off here. I got minus 4u. Is that what I box that in? No. no. Right. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to come back to the next open term that I haven't done anything with. And I'm going to come up with a different shape. So let's keep it simple. I'm just going to use a circle. And I have positive or plus 8z. So now I'm going to move along the problem. Do I, is that, uh, can I circle that one in? No. No, because it has a u. What about this one? No. 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 So I just have the one. So what do I do? Is just throw him away? No. no. no i got to keep him. So I'm going to keep him right there. So I come back to the next open term, and it's plus 3u. So I'm going to use an underline this time. Okay. And so I only have one other open term. And does it have a u raised to the first power? Yes. So I will underline it, being careful to include the sign to the left of the number so I know what kind of term it is, positive or negative. All right, so now I'm just going to come back and combine my boxes and circles and lines. Um, so I have 2z squared, and I have minus 6z squared. Now, like Ms. Townsend was saying, if you type that into the calculator, it's going to say, what? Well, maybe it's going to, you know, not going to do anything. Okay, but you can work with the coefficients of the terms, the numbers. So if the math part gives you trouble, put it in your calculator. So you would type in 2 minus 6, right? And what do you get when you type in 2 minus 6? Negative 4. Negative 4. So i got negative 4z squared. Right? Now, one little thing I tend to do, you don't have to do it, but once I've combined those terms, I kind of cross them off. So I know, hey, I'm done with those. Right? So now I'm going to come back to my next little shape here. Now I've got a circle and I've got positive 8z. Now, do I have any more circles? No. no. So again, I can't throw the fellow away. I got to keep him. So what am I going to do? Bury him. I bury him, but what? What was it? No. Right, I'm just going to add it on, bring him down, just like he is, plus 8z. Okay. And cross him off. And now all we have left are the two terms here with the u raised to the first power. So I have a plus 3u minus 4u. What do I get when I combine those like terms? Negative 1u, right? So I can write that uh, two ways. I can say minus u, but you're saying, well, wait a minute, where's the number? Okay. Well, anytime in algebra when you have you're dealing with variables like you know x's or y's, always remember that if you just see the x all by itself, it's not by itself. Okay. What number is in front of that x that you don't see? A one. It's I like to call it the invisible one. Okay. Just like you will also have, you'll learn later, an invisible exponent of a 1 and a divisor of a 1 down here. 
okay? So even though it looks like it's all alone, it's actually not. So this is actually minus 1u. And if it helps, and a lot of times it's a good practice to do that, put the 1 there, okay? Mm -hmm. Keep track of your numbers. All right, now technically, <clears throat> Ms. Townsend was mentioning to the other classes that when you're writing out your expressions, you have to put the terms in an order so that the, the variables are in alphabetical order. Okay, so if we look at these three terms, are we in alphabetical order? No. no. What actually should come first? U. U, okay, so watch. We're gonna write the U first, and then the minus four Z squared, and then the plus eight Z. Okay, so now am I correct now? No, which sleep? <laughs> What's wrong with this? Very good. The negative sign, remember that's negative one. So if you actually were changing this, make sure you carry that negative sign. You can actually do this, okay? Because while this is still correct, on a test that you're taking, the multiple choice answer choice might look like this. And you might have this and think, oh, I got the wrong answer. Actually, you didn't. You just need to put it in alphabetical order, okay? So this would be your final answer. Okay, and how do we, is there anything we could do to keep our Z's from looking like twos? Because sometimes they start looking like twos and then we accidentally combine them with our numbers. Anybody ever seen something that you can do? Um, I would just keep it pointy. Okay. okay. <laughs> you can. Circle the Z's. Circle the Z's. Well, if you circle, it kind of get kind of cluttered, wouldn't it? But that's a good answer. I like it. Watch this. If you put a little line in the middle of the Z's, you can make them sure that you know it's a letter and not a number two. Okay? So I would do that because I don't know about you, my handwriting starts looking like doctor's handwriting after a while, where you can't read anything. And she um, also, so it's messy. Yeah, but. And she also mentioned when you go to make your T's, you put the little tail on Right, the curve the T instead so of making it like straight up and down. Side. Good job, guys. Okay, so that yesterday, like if you cover this up, we just did distribute, so we multiply that 7 right? times everything in the parentheses, and don't but forget our little like trick, terms, that if this is negative, we circle okay. it so we see the negative, because a lot of times if you don't circle it, what happens? You forget that it's negative, right? So, somebody tell me what 7 times 5 in would be. 35 in, very nice, very good. Okay? And then we do the second one. Remember, because if we multiply the number on the outside times the first term, we also have to multiply the number on the outside times the second term. Remember from yesterday, our hamburgers and soda, right? French fries and chicken nuggets, and he wanted okay, to multiply example, this order, this. so we multiplied right. everything. And I have so purpose. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Can we just throw this yeah, away? No. No, we got to bring it down, oh, right, because we haven't used it yet. So this is the first time we're doing this, so I want to make sure you bring it down. Okay? So everybody, what we just did was distribute. So I want you to write a D. Up here, and I want you to put a check above the D because we did the distribution in the problem. And now we also got to combine like terms. Watch that you combine like terms. Look at the problem now. Do we have more than one thing that can add together? Which one can add together? Okay, so hold on. Somebody said negative seven can add with something. Where's another constant? You know what combining like terms are. No. What are the two things that can add together? Yeah, these two. Okay, so we're gonna put circles around these because they're light terms. And so we have 35 in minus two in, and 35 minus two is 33 in. And then you just bring down your minus 7 because it has nothing else to combine with it. Okay? I'm going to check and make sure everybody has that. What's the DC? What's the what for? The DC. Okay. So the reason we're going to start writing DC next to each one is because you've got to do distribute first, and then you got to do what? Yeah, combine like terms. So Y'all see it? It's like a little check mark for yourself so that you know you did both steps in the problem. So all of the combination problems are going to be distribute, 
Okay. And then you can buy life charts. Okay. Let's try one right. more. What's the first step in our process? And so what I want to do on 3D okay. and why is I want to make sure that I need to and say, are we, what's not are we, are we, in the crazy? crazy? Are we counting? Uh, uh, are we counting? Yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. He brought up PEMDOS. Y'all remember, yeah. please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And okay. then when you're solving, numbers, no well, whether you're simplifying an expression or evaluating or solving an equation, you're going to use steps just like you do. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So right here we're starting it out, okay? Now, if I'm looking at so, this, look at this distribution. our what first step is to distribute. And so, do we need to distribute? Yes. Yes. And why do we need so to distribute? This is what you need to be thinking when you're doing this. Okay. So, everybody look at that. Take away the parentheses. So, okay. negative parentheses. If I see parentheses in a problem, I need to distribute to get rid of them. You with me? Okay. So, that means now, negative what do I need to do? Can somebody tell me besides eight? Right, multiply the 7 nine, right? times negative the 5 in. And what would that give me? 35 in. Okay, so we've done the distribution. right now all you're doing is multiplying that number times the coefficient okay. of this term. Flash, what two things or three things? Might be more than two. Next, are we done distributing? No, no. we're not. What else we have to distribute? We need to distribute all okay. seven times, right? Okay. Seven so times the negative seven. one. And what do we get when we have seven times negative one? Negative seven. Does he want to be called? And then parentheses are all right? Now what do I do with this fellow down here? Minus two in. I throw him away. Negative one. What do you think? Negative one. Negative one. Bring it down. Just like it is. Negative four. Okay. Right? Okay. Now, let me ask you. We're down here, right? Do I need to distribute it? No. Why not? No, why not? Why do I not distribute anymore? No more parentheses. So that's when I know I can check that off because I'm done. Ready? Okay. My next and then bring uh, ready down for the next step, which is combined like that. Everybody okay with that? And that's your final answer. Yes? Okay. okay. So next, we're going to combine like terms. Does so have again, questions? remember we talked about using shapes and things? I'm going to start off just using okay. a box because that's easy one. to do. Okay. So Last I have 35 one. in. Do I need to box in any, any other term? Yes, you do. What's your name? What is it? Margarita, do I need to box in any other terms here? I will get what? I was so cool. Very good. Negative two. Then we'll get it straight. Okay. And why did I box that in? Now I'm asking Maria. Because they are like terms. So you need to get used to the language, like terms. So we need to box this in because these two are like terms. Now we've got this fella here. Are we going to box him in? No. So we'll just draw a circle, right? Because it's still a term, it still matters, okay? So now I need to combine my like terms. So what do I get when I take 35 in my 33? Two times seven. What's two times seven? Uh, 14, and then what do we do with this T? Bring it down. There you go. Because we can't do anything when we don't know what it is. Now, once we know what T is, then we can plug in. But we don't know what T is yet. Okay, now look at this one. Don't forget to circle your negative. Because when we circle it, then we don't forget it's negative. Okay? So negative 5 times 2t. What is it? Yeah, negative 10. That would be my answer. So make sure you got this added. Good job. Okay. Last one to go on the distribution. Negative 5 times 3. What's negative 5 times 3? Negative 5. 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 Yeah, negative, negative 15. Negative. Really? Well, you said it like six thousand. Yeah. I didn't hear you back there. I'm sorry. I got to speak up a little bit. We got two people going on. Just go ahead and speak up a little bit. Okay. So we got it. What do we do with this 8t squared? Negative 6. Bring it down. I love it. Bring it down. Plus 9. Plus 9, thank you. Okay, so we've done our distribution. How do we know our distribution is done? No. No more parentheses. No, no more parentheses. parentheses. That's right. Excellent. Okay. Multiply by two. Why would you multiply by two? Because that's not square for next one. What number do I need but to square? Squared is raising it to a power of two. It's not multiplying by two. 
Because, like, remember, if you have three squared, it's three times three. If you have three times two, that's six. What's three times three? Nine. So it's not the same thing, right? Squaring is not the same as what's time with you. But we'll get into that when we do evaluate. Okay? We're going to start a good question. Okay? Okay. Connection to vocabulary. Okay, connection to vocabulary. How many terms do we have in the final answer of 3A? Two, that's right, okay? We have two terms. This is a term and this is a term. Does anybody remember what that's called formally? Do I need to do that? That's hard because it's last Thursday. You guys should go eight. Why not? Wait. She's looking, she's looking. It was on the vocab under terms. Oh, wait, I got this. Now we're moving on to the next one. you better not answer me. I'm trying to find it. It's under terms. Do I need a box? Two terms. Starts with a B. A box. A variable in any letter. Okay? Look under terms. We wrote it down. Wait, what's a B? Binomial, you're saying it. Binomial, yes, babe. Very good. Okay. Mm.